I've got a new painting to show you. I've finished my bar now. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step to about the halfway point of the owl. You'll see me work wet on wet and wet on dry. I use salt for texture. I work all loose and washy in some areas and other areas are highly detailed. This bird's got a lot going on. I'll show you the reference photo that I used. I bought it from wildlife reference photos. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so let's take a look at this bird. Okay, I've got my drawing on my paper ready to go. Now, I didn't need to stretch my paper because I'm working on Ash's watercolour board. This is hot pressed. The first thing I'm going to do is wet above the eye with some water. I'm using my mop brush because it holds lots of water. Oh, this is a grey that I like to mix. This is mixed from ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm just painting it onto the wet section above his eye. I've just got water on my brush at the moment. And I can use the wet brush just to soften that edge there. Taking the water down further onto his nose. Got some more grey on my brush. I'm just going to paint a few directional strokes just onto the wet paper. And now I'm just going to drop in some Windsor Violet just onto that wet paint, just for interest. Now I'm wetting the cheek area with some water. And then I can drop in some more of that grey that I mixed. And I'll also put some Windsor Violet down here as well. Now I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And I drop in some Windsor Violet on this side as well. Some more of the grey mix down here. And some more directional strokes on his nose. Now I've dried it off with the hair dryer and this is what I'm left with. I'm going to start working on the eye now so I'm just painting some water on first. And now I'm using some of my grey mix. I take it all the way around the pupil. And now I'm just wetting this other area of the eye, just with some water. And this is sepia that I'm using now. Just painting it straight onto the wet paper. I'm letting it bleed across. And then I can take it carefully around the outside of the eye there. And while that sepia is still wet, I can drop in some lamp black on the inner edge. Now I'm wetting the highlighted part of the eye with some water. And I use my liner brush just to drop in some of that grey that I mixed. And now I'm going to paint some lamp black onto the pupil of the eye. Dropped more paint in there and made it darker. And I've switched down to my liner brush. And now I'm putting even more pigment in there. Just making it darker. And this is the grey that I mixed. I'm just painting it around the outer edge of the eye. And also onto the corner part. Now I'm deepening the colour around the edge of the pupil just with the grey mix and back to the lamp black now just on the outer section of the eye I'm just painting on dry paper here getting a bit of water on my brush now I 
you can just soften that colour slightly with the water. Now I've re-wet the brown part of the eye and now I'm dropping in some more of the lamp black. I'm just letting it bleed into the brown part of the eye. Okay, getting a bit bolder with my colour now, so I've got some more lamp black up here. And then I just join it up with the wet part of the eye. A little bit of the grey mix up in here. And now I can start to paint around the eye with some burnt sienna. So this is just watery paint and I'm painting on dry paper. And then I can start to flick out some of those fine feathers that are around the eye. Just leaving those fine feathers for now and I'm just wetting with water inside the highlighted part of the eye. Now I've got some ultramarine blue on my brush and I'm just painting it along that top section. And then I pull some of that colour down just to create those reflections that I see on the eye. Now I'm just painting in some more of the grey that I mixed before. And now I'm being extra careful as I paint some lamp black along the inner edge of the eye. Back to the burnt sienna now and I'm just taking it along the top edge of the eye and then I can use that burnt sienna to create some more of those fine feathers just flicking it with my brush I'm painting on dry paper just trying not to be too stiff with my brush I'm just washing in a little bit more lamp black into the corner of the eye and then I deepen this outer section again a third time with some more lamp black. Okay, so moving off the eye for a little while. And I've just drawn in some feathers on top of his beak there. And I want to wash in this section here just above the beak. So I've wet this area and now I'm painting some more of the grey. And I just paint it in and around those feathers that I've just drawn. And then I drop in some Windsor Violet as well. I can use my liner brush and I can just take it up the nose there just to separate the feathers from one another. Now I want to create a bit of detail on the left side of the nose here. So I've wet the area with water just to keep my paint edges soft. And I'm using my liner brush just to pull some of the grey across. And as I said, that water on the paper keeps those paint edges soft. Moving down onto the beak now, and this is Titanium Buff. And while the Titanium Buff is still wet, I can paint some Windsor Violet on just to blend with it on the paper. Take it down the side of the beak. And then I can drop in some of the grey mix as well. Now I want to define some of these feathers here so I just paint some water underneath them and then I use the grey mix just to start defining them. And I do the same thing on this other side. Back to burnt sienna now and I want to pull some of those feathers down beside the beak. And I have wet this area with water before I started painting. There's a bit more pigment on my brush now. I can pull it the other way onto the feathers on the side of the nose. Now I've gone back to the eye again and I'm just increasing the lamp black in the inner corner there. Painting on damp paper here. Just increasing the colour yet again with some more burnt sienna. As the paint dries, it tends to dry lighter than what you expect. So I've got to keep layering the paint over the top. So just painting on dry paper here. Now I've turned the 
turned my board just because I find it easier to pull strokes towards myself like this. And I increase the colour at the top as well. Just pull those feathers out a little bit further. And now I'll carry that colour down his nose a little bit further as well. And a bit more up here too. Now I've just repeated that entire process on the other side. I'm painting on wet paper here and I'm just increasing the black on the inner corner. Okay, so it's time to paint these little feathers around the face. I'm using gold ochre here and I'm painting on dry paper. I'm just washing in the first little batch of them. Just looking at the reference photo as I paint because some of them are white. I don't want to paint over the white ones. So that is dried now and I'm re-wetting one of them with some water. And what I want to do is paint some burnt sienna just along the edge where one touches the other one. So it's on the lower edge of the feather. Now I've just got water on my brush and I can just soften the edge of the paint just so I don't end up with a hard edge there. So this is going to be a slow process just as I work my way through these feathers. So burnt sienna again just at the base of the feather. Just softening edges as I go with some water on my brush. So I've dried it off and I've done that whole section there at the top of his head just with the burnt sienna. Now I need to draw a few little feathers that are going to remain white and I'm going to paint over them with some masking fluid. I've listed all the supplies that I'm using down in the description of this video. So I squirt some of the fluid onto a plate and then I'm going to use an old brush just to apply it. Okay, it's dry now, so I can start to wash over some water. So here you can see the water on the paper. It's just a little bit too damp at the moment for me to paint onto it. So we'll just wait a few minutes until it absorbs into the paper. Okay, so I'm using some sepia now on my liner brush. I want the water on the paper because it just keeps all the paint edges soft and I don't end up with any hard lines. So I'm just sort of dabbing my brush at the moment and I'm trying to reserve some of the white paper. So I have to keep re-wetting this area with water because it dries before I can get to it. So I was probably a little bit overzealous when I wet that whole area with water. So I'm just sort of using the side of the brush and I'm more or less scribbling just over the damp paper. So this area is dry now and I'm just using my eraser just to take off the masking fluid. And then with the marks that remain, I can just paint some sepia just at the base of them. So I'm painting on dry paper here. And you can see that the colour's a bit darker than when I had the water on the paper. And now that I've done that, I can come back to these feathers here at the front and just paint some little markings down the centre of them. So I've put a little tiny bit of water there and I'm just dropping the sepia onto the wet spot. Just wetting down the side of his head with some water. And now I'm using gold ochre again. I'm just washing in the side of his head there. Taking it down a 
a bit further and now I've got some of the grey that I've mixed. It's painting it onto the wet paper. And I drop in some violet as well. And while that paint's wet, I can drop in some more gold ochre just along the edge. So I've got lots of pigment on my brush at the moment. So back to these feathers along the side. And I'm doing the same thing that I did up the top, but instead of using burnt sienna, I'm using gold ochre this time. And I haven't washed the feathers in with the gold ochre first, I've just left them white. Back to my grey mix now, and I'm just painting along the edge of the face. And back onto these little side feathers. And instead of using the gold ochre, I'm now using grey. So I'm just alternating between the colours. So this is some gold ochre now. I'm just painting onto the damp paper, just at the base of the feather. So a little tiny bit of water. And then I go in with some grey. That water keeps the paint edges soft. Now I've got sepia on my brush and I'm just running it along the edge of some of them. Just some of the feathers at the front here have got a darker edge on them. Now I'm painting a little bit of detail on the side of the face with my grey mix. I'm just painting on dry paper again. I just keep that colour really light, just so it's very subtle. A little bit of Windsor Violet now, but the paper is damp where I'm working. Now I'm wetting down further onto his body, just with some water. I use my mop brush because it holds lots of water. And then I wash in some watery gold ochre. Just onto the damp paper. And this is a little bit of Windsor Violet. Just along the edge. Some more Windsor Violet up here under these neck feathers. Just let the water disperse the pigment for me. Try not to fuss with it too much. And let the colours blend on the paper. And now for some of the grey mix. Now I let it sit there for a little while just to take the wetness of the paper away slightly. And now I'm dropping in some table salt and I'm hoping that I'll be able to create a little bit of texture here at the front. So I've let it dry and this is what I've come back to. And it's created some beautiful markings on the feathers there. So this is the end of part one and I'll finish the owl off in the next video for you. Thanks for watching. If you want weekly tutorials like this one, then make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out. And I'll post the second half of this owl for you tomorrow.